How's it going everybody? This is Helmi and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the truth about making money online. So if you go into YouTube and just search how to make money online, see what pops up. Hmm. It looks like 80% of the search results are a bunch of teenager kids telling us how to make a fortune online without actually doing anything. Seriously? But hold up, let's put our skepticism aside and let's imagine this is true for one minute. You can be a self-made entrepreneur. You don't have to fit into a job and someone else's culture. You can work anywhere and with whoever you want and you can create your own lifestyle and career. So I get it, the allure to make money online is definitely strong. These kids are making millions online and I'm like 36 and I'm like, what? What am I doing with my life? And if they can do it, I'm pretty sure I can do it too. So I went on an epic quest to seek this elusive make money online dragon. So after several months of me hustling, experimenting, and who's kidding who, multiple fail half-assed projects, I'm happy to report that I currently have five online income streams. Not too shabby. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the truth of my five online income source so you can learn from my mistakes and you don't waste time from trial and error. Okay, so let's begin. So let's take a look at this pie chart. This is my five online income stream. So I'll start from the lowest contribution all the way up to the highest. And for each of these five online income streams, I'm going to be sharing with you what is it, level of difficulty, the pros and cons, and tips for newbies. So let's start with my lowest online income stream brand sponsorship. So what is a brand sponsorship? So it's when you collaborate with a brand to help promote their product or service in exchange for their free product or money. So brand sponsorship is my lowest online income source at only 8% of my overall income. Surprise, surprise, you think that an influencer would make much more money in brand sponsorship. Maybe some do, but personally, I don't want to make most of my money from brand sponsorships because I don't want to be a sellout. Most of the time, it typically won't perform very well in the organic search. So if you do too many of these kind of content, your viewership and your channel growth will suffer. And currently, I don't do any outbound emails as well. Like I never approach a brand like, hey, can we do sponsorship? I've not that stage yet. So most of the sponsorship that I got is that they found me online, either from my YouTube video, blog, Twitter, or TikTok. And then they contacted me via email for a brand sponsorship. So who's brand sponsorship for? You do need a little bit of online audience. However, you don't need to have millions of followers in order to start getting brand sponsorship. In fact, I've secured TikTok video sponsorships when I only had around 1,600 followers. And on my YouTube channel, when I had around 2,000-ish subscribers, the brands who approach me because they kind of like my vibe online and how I explain stuff. So they want me to explain their product. Here's an example of an email I got that started a brand collab. So this person said, hi, I was on your YouTube channel today. Must say you are doing a commendable job. I've seen some of your content and I do think that there is a lot of synergy in what you are doing. I would like to invite you to join our affiliate program where we can collaborate and create more exciting content. What do you think? And then I said, well, I'm not really interested in just doing the affiliates. I can do a media package, meaning you pay me to create certain content to promote your product plus the affiliate commission. So they responded by saying this, thank you for your response. I understand your way of working. We typically look for CPA model, which is the affiliate. Having said that, we love your content and are open for discussion. Can you share your sponsorship quotes so that we can discuss this with our internal team? So there you go. They like my vibe online and my personal brand that they're willing to hear out my counter offer. And that's the benefit of having a personal brand. Okay, so level of difficulty for brand sponsorships. If the brand approach you, chances are they really like you and your personality. So it's pretty hard to screw this up unless you didn't fulfill whatever was promised in the agreement. So I'd give brand sponsorship a difficulty rating of maybe two out of five. Pretty easy to do. Now, pros and cons of brand sponsorship. So the pros is that you get to work with a lot of brands that you like. Sometimes they'll approach you. A strong personality will draw sponsorships in. Three, if they like you, you can name your price. Four, once you start having one sponsorship, that will typically attract other sponsorships to come to you. You'll be more valuable to the sponsors if you have a very clear target audience and niche. Now, con, without a personality, you're a commodity. Two, don't let the brand decide what content to do because most of the time they don't know. If you feel like it's gonna flop, don't do it. Or you can advise them of what content to do. Three, some brands will approach you and they're trying to prey on new creators who are desperate and naive, meaning they want you to do free work for them. So say no to that. And lastly, you need to make sure that whatever it is that you're promoting is relevant to your brand. Okay, so advice for newbies for brand sponsorships. Personality is key. There's a lot of people doing the same thing. But if they like you, your online personality, the way you explain things, they want to work with you. You can demand the highest pay for brand sponsorship typically on YouTube. And the worst place to get sponsorships in my experience is TikTok. 
they'll give you like a really cheap product, like a plastic product, probably cost five bucks or something. And they expect you to have this high quality video in return. I don't think it's worth the money. Four, if you wanna attract a certain brand to work with you, a hack is to create content to promote this stuff for free first. Then you can use that to pitch to them or the competitors will come to you. All right, the second way of making money is display ads. It's contributing 15% of my online income. So what are display ads? It's when advertisers want to place their ad on your digital content. So you can think of it like a billboard. If you own the billboard and then there's a lot of traffic going through that place with a lot of eyeballs, you can rent out an ad space on your billboard to advertisers. So the more traffic you have or eyeballs looking at your billboard, the higher rate you can charge to advertisers. But you can think of your website or your YouTube channel as the digital billboard. So there are two ways to make money from ad placement. One is manual, the other one is automatic. We're gonna start with a manual ad placement. This is where you directly deal with advertisers, where they can place their ad on a specific place on your blog, email newsletter, YouTube channel, online course, or digital products. So the advertiser would typically give you the ad that they design, sometimes call a graphical asset. So you don't have to do any creative work. You just have to place their ad wherever you guys agreed upon. Okay, so the next place, which I recommend for beginners is automatic ad placement. So usually when you're starting out, you don't really have that much traffic. It's pretty hard to get a direct display ad deal with brands. But what you can do instead, if you have a website, you can sign up with an ad broker like Ezoic, where they can automatically place ads throughout your website and split the profit with you. Another option is if you have a YouTube channel, once you are in the YouTube partner program, they'll handle the ads and split the profit with you. So currently display ads is contributing 15% of my online income. So when I started blogging, I registered my website on Ezoic and I started making money there. You can check out how much I made from my first year of blogging on this YouTube video. I stopped my partnership with Ezoic because at some point I switched my attention from SEO writing to YouTube and Twitter. And I also didn't feel like the revenue that I'm gaining from placing ads on my website was worth it because I do feel that it does distracts my reader from my content. So the only ad revenue that I make now is from the YouTube partner program. This is as passive as it can get. There's literally nothing for me to do except for just create more new content. So who's display ads for? Display ad with ad brokers only work if you have an online website. That means you bought a domain name and a domain hosting package. So for example, my website is helmihassan.com. That means I bought the domain name and the hosting, right? It's mine. But if you use a free version, it could be like helmihassan.wix.com or helmihassan.wordpress.com or helmihassan.squarespace.com. So there's something in between your name and then that .com or .io or whatever. A lot of ad brokers don't wanna accept that. Your only other option, if you don't have a website to make money from display ads is YouTube. So if you have a YouTube channel, and you are in the YouTube partner program, you can start making money from your videos. So the pros and cons of display. So the first pros is that it's pretty passive. There's really nothing to it. And two, there's no creative work on your side. All right, you don't have to design the display ad. All you have to do is create content. So the cons of display ads is your ad earning could be really low if you don't have a lot of traffic. Display ads on ad brokers only work if you own the website. Ads could potentially annoy your viewer or reader. They, and there could be a possibility that ads from your competitor might show up within your content. So that could be a big deal for some people. So level of difficulty for display ads, there's really nothing to it besides meeting the minimum requirement to join a display ad network or the YouTube partner program. So I'll give this a difficulty rating of one out of five. It's really easy. All right, next, freelance work. This contributes 17% of my online income. So what is freelancing? So this is when you package up your skills and charge people to help solve a specific problem. So popular examples, website development, you help build somebody else's website, social media package. Some businesses are so busy, they don't have time to manage their social media. A programmer, maybe a business is developing a new digital product. You could be the guy coding the thing. And it doesn't have to be all the digital stuff. Babysitter, underrated. A babysitter with qualification is it's super high demand. Other examples could be copywriter, videographer, or editor. So freelancing is a new income stream for me also. I just started and it contributes 17% of my online income. 
So I'm gonna share with you how I got started. I was sharing my journey as a digital content consultant on Twitter and the projects that I'm currently working on. Here's an example of a tweet. So I'm just saying, hey, I'm updating my website. If you wanna build a personal brand, having your own website is a must. And then another example, as a digital marketing consultant, I advise my clients how to get more leads. In my recent project, I'm helping out a local car rental company to set up a professional modern website. Over time, people were like, hey, I kinda like your website. Can you do something for me? So I get some of these requests from Twitter DMs. This is why it's important for you to share your journey and what you're currently working on. So currently I have three WordPress development projects as of this video. So who's freelancing for? Anyone who has an on-demand skill, creators like me who have a YouTube channel and all that, but they need time for the organic content to, to blow up. So in the meantime, you need money. So how are you gonna get money? Well, by offering freelance services. And anybody who wants to make extra money, even if you have a full-time job, you can't rely on just one income. You can start freelancing by selling some of your skills. So the pros and cons of freelancing. Freelancing is such a huge topic and I can't speak for everybody. So my analysis here is skewed towards web development because that's the only service that I provide at this point. So pro number one, you can earn extra money and possibly replace your main income. Two, you generally, you can pick who you wanna work with and what projects you wanna work in. Three, you can set your own hours and price. So that's flexibility. Four, you typically won't be tied down to somebody's office so it's pretty much a digital nomad kind of lifestyle. And lastly, I think it's pretty fulfilling because you can pick what you wanna do and who you wanna work with. All right, so the cons, you literally have to do everything yourself from sales, admin, marketing, customer support, everything. So it's far beyond the servicing of the product. It could be tough and overwhelming to manage your time and finances because it's irregular. There will be times you, you have to burn the midnight oil to meet deadlines. Four, you don't have benefits like a full-time employee. So you have to deal with that yourself, your own insurance, your own benefits. And lastly, you need to manage your own finances and pipeline of future clients and work. So level of difficulty for freelancing, people always portray freelancing as this super easy thing to do. But the truth is, there's a whole spectrum of responsibility that you gotta do, okay? So I give freelancing a difficulty rating of four out of five because of the entire spectrum that you have to manage. My second biggest online income is from selling digital products. It contributes 21% of my entire online income. So what's a digital product? A digital product is any product that exists only online. Popular examples are selling an ebook, selling a webinar, selling a template, for example, a Notion template, a WordPress template, a Canva template, a software if you're a developer, like an app, a plugin, which could be a WordPress plugin or a video editing plugin, a preset filter for video or photographers, or selling an online course. As of this Friday, I have two digital products that I sell. So the first one is the content masterclass, which is an online course. And the second one is a paid webinar. So I put my heart and soul into creating the content masterclass. It took me one full month. And I'm incredibly grateful to get really good feedback from my students for both of my online course and webinar. Check this out. So here's a review for my webinar. Thank you, Helmi. Very insightful and meaningful value I got from him. There are a lot of actionable points from the session. If you ever feel stuck on content marketing, reach him out seriously. That's a really good review. I didn't even ask for this. And then the second one is a content masterclass review. Really wanted to do some content, but always so scared. I bought Helmi Hassan's creative bootcamp course. And then with some encouragement from family and friends to share my money story, this is what happened. And then she shows some screenshot of the difference in the views of her TikTok videos. It makes me feel really good inside. What I learned from launching digital products is that I genuinely enjoy teaching people. So the pros and cons of selling digital products. So let's start with the pros. Well, number one, it's a great way to package out whatever knowledge and experience you have and sell it online. The second pros is that you create the thing once and you'll have online income for maybe a couple of years down the road. And number three, you have full control of the digital product. If you think some parts needs to be tweaked or updated, you can do so at any time. So cons, creating digital products, especially online courses can be resource intensive, especially if it's your first one. Two, you need to figure out how to accept payments online. Three, digital products typically don't sell themselves. So you have to do something constantly to promote the digital product so people will buy. So this is when having a strong personal brand would really help you a lot in selling your digital products. And lastly, I think the best place to sell your digital product is on your own website, but trying to figure out the technicality part of it will require a lot of hours to figure all this thing out. Okay, so the level of difficulty to create digital products. To create a digital template, let's say a Canva template, or something you sell on Etsy, I would say it's a two out of five difficulty. It's not that bad. To create a webinar, if it's your first webinar, creating the slides will 
take a lot of your time. So your first webinar, I would rate the difficulty at four out of five. Your second and beyond webinar would be pretty easy. I think it will be two out of five in terms of difficulty. Now creating an online course, especially a video online course, the level of difficulty is five out of five. It's probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I do not recommend beginners to start straight up with a video online course. It's seriously a lot of work. Okay, so now is my biggest online income. You wonder what it is? Surprise, surprise, it's affiliate marketing, contributing a whopping 40% of my online income. So what is affiliate marketing? Affiliate marketing is when you promote somebody else's product or service online, and when somebody buys through your link, you are entitled for an affiliate commission. So it's kind of like referral marketing. Somebody buys through your recommendation, you get a cut. So an example, if you're in Southeast Asia, would be Shopee and Lazada affiliate program. So you can promote products there and earn a cut. Then there's Amazon affiliate. If you have audiences in North America, and you can also join affiliate networks, meaning they're like the middle companies that once you join them, you have access to promote multiple brands within one dashboard. So an example of this is Involve Asia. If you're in Southeast Asia, Partnerize if you're in the UK and Impact if you're worldwide, especially in the US. So to be honest, I'm quite surprised that affiliate income is still my largest chunk of online income at a whopping 40%. So that means the review view content that I do about these products are working so well that people trust me and want to support me by clicking on my affiliate links. So who's affiliate marketing for? Anyone can start affiliate marketing. In fact, if you're new and you've never made a dime online, I highly recommend you start making money with affiliate marketing. So the affiliate marketing pros and cons, let's start with the pros. Number one, it's passive income. Number two, if you build a solid personal brand and when you recommend something, your followers will most likely want to support you and click and buy through your link. Cons, you need to constantly create new content to promote the same thing. Cons number two, in order to get your content in front of people's eyeballs, it needs to be really good. And the last one, I think it's a little hard to do affiliate marketing if you are a nameless brand. It's doable, but again, this is a referral marketing. You buy because I recommend something. Why would you buy my recommendation? Well, it's because you like me. You trust me and that's personal branding. It's a lot easier to sell a recommendation from a personal brand as compared to a nameless brand. So level of difficulty of affiliate marketing is actually not that hard. I would rate it at a two out of five. It's pretty easy. So advice for newbies, you should start reviewing products that you genuinely love. If you're in Southeast Asia and you want to figure out how to start promoting products from Shopee and Lazada and earn affiliate income, I have a dedicated video right here. Okay, there you go. So that's all five of my online income streams. So let's look back at my income pie chart here and let's look at the table of summary. So brand sponsorship is my smallest income at 8%, but it is pretty easy to do at two out of five difficulty. Display ads contributes 15% to my online income, but it's also the easiest to do. There's literally no effort, so that's one out of five. Freelance work is very fulfilling, but it is very, very tiring. It's contributing 17% of my online income currently. Difficulty is pretty difficult at four out of five because you have to do stuff that is not just delivering the service, but all the other aspects of marketing and sales, finance, admin, and all that kind of stuff. So all that adds up. So I would put the difficulty rating at four out of five. Digital products, it's my second largest income, 21%. It is extremely hard to do in the beginning to get it all set up, but once you have it, it's pretty passive. All you have to do is keep promoting the thing. Difficulty for online video course, five out of five. Totally don't recommend for beginners. My largest online income comes from affiliate marketing, which means me promoting other people's products product. Difficulty, two out of five. So if you look at this chart, it looks like the optimum method for me to scale my online business, maximum earnings with the lowest effort and difficulty would probably be affiliate marketing. So how long does it take to make money online? Hmm. If you know what you're doing, it could be pretty fast within a couple of months. However, I reckon that you're pretty new. Realistically, it would probably take you a year, maybe more. So you should set some realistic expectations. I'll share my timeline below. All right, so this is my online income over time. I started monetizing in February, 2022. That's from display ads on my blog and YouTube channel. I still have a full-time job at the time. I've been trying to grow my channel ever since, but work, personal life, getting married, having a kid, really took a toll on my priorities and my focus. However, I pulled my stuff together and in February, 2023, I launched my first digital product, which is my content masterclass online course. And in February, my income shot up and a compounding effect is that people recognize 
recognize what I do and started to ask for my services. And then I have other online income sources such as freelancing and starting to sell on webinars. So this is my journey under my unique circumstance. What I can say is that you should try as many different ways to make money online as possible and see which one is the, the most worth it for you and which one matches your personality and goals. Now, which one of my online income do I enjoy the most and why? I'm pretty lucky that I have five different ways to make money online and I can foresee that it's going to expand to even more than five in the future because if any one of these were to collapse or ever go away, I would still have the remaining to back me up. So it's not like just having a full-time job and all of a sudden you get fired and then that you're screwed, right? But out of all this income stream, the one that I personally enjoy doing the most is selling digital products or training. So what I discovered when I was selling my online course, the Content Masterclass, is that I thoroughly enjoy teaching people. There's just something about teaching, coaching people. You can see their eyes light up. You can see them getting excited to do their own personal project. I like making them see that there's hope. So it brings a great deal of satisfaction and purpose for me beyond the monetary gain. To know what I'm talking about, I got all these really, really nice reviews from my students and it just tugs on my heartstrings. Come on, man. Like who doesn't like to get reviews like this? Thank you so much to all of my students. So what will I focus on next? Well, since I like teaching and training so much, I will try to focus on that. I will create more digital products. I will also try to venture into physical small group training and maybe more webinars. All right, to sum up, what do I think about making money online? Final thoughts. Whichever path you choose to make money online, just remember one thing, having a personal brand will help you out a lot. I've said that so many times throughout this video, I think you kind of get the point already. So there's no point to be embarrassed in front of the camera where you can use your personality to sell, to secure your future, you know? The internet has made it possible for anyone to make their dream into a reality. It's just amazing. You can have your own digital real estate, which is your own website. It's really cheap nowadays. You wanna have your own TV channel? Sure, all you need now is an internet connection and a smartphone. You wanna sell digital products, but you don't have your own website? Don't worry, there's Gumroad and Payhip. You wanna know how to accept payments from your clients? Don't worry, man, there's Stripe to accept Visa, MasterCard, Amex. Then there's Toyip Pay for people from Malaysia if you wanna accept local FPX currency and also Atomi, which is kind of like a buy now, pay later kind of paying scheme. Seriously, now is the best time to make money online. There's absolutely no excuse. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed my little rant here about the truth about making money online. If you want a solid foundation on how to personal brand yourself and to create a solid content strategy, check out my content masterclass down below. Again, my name is Helmi. See ya.